Welcome to Storytime with Andy. Today we're going to be reading a book called The One Thing. This is The One Thing has been recommended by a number of influencers that I follow, including, I believe, uh, John Lee Dumas, uh, Aaron Walker, and others. And so today we're going to look at the table of contents and actually complete chapter one. So here goes. Chapter, okay, contents. It's actually 17, 18 chapters divided into three parts. And so the first part is called The One Thing, uh, The Lies They they Mislead and Derail Us. Okay, so chapter one, The One Thing. Quote, be like a postage stamp. Stick to one thing until you get there. Unquote, by Josh Billings. On June 7th, 1991, the Earth moved for 112 minutes. Not really, but it felt that way. I was watching the hit comedy City Slickers, and the audience's laughter rattled and rocked the theater. Considered one of the funniest movies of all time, it also sprinkled in unexpected dose to, doses of wisdom and insight. In one memorable scene, Curly, the gritty cowboy played by the late Jack Palance, the city slicker Mitch, played by Billy Crystal, leave the group to search for stray cattle. Although they had clashed for most of the movie, riding along together, they finally connect over a conversation about life. Suddenly, Curly reins his horse to a stop and turns to the saddle to face Mitch. Curly, do you know what the secret of life is? Mitch, no. What? Curly, this, he holds up one finger. Mitch, your finger? Curly, one thing, just one thing. You stick to that and everything else don't mean shit. Curly, oh wait, excuse me, Mitch, that's great, but what's the one thing? Curly, that's what you've got to figure out. Out of the mouth of a fictional character to our ears comes the secret of success. Whether the writers knew it or unwittingly stumbled on it, what they wrote was the absolute truth. The one thing is the best approach to getting what you want. I didn't really get this until much later. I'd expected success in the past, but it wasn't until I hit a wall that I began to connect my results with my approach. In less than a decade, we built a successful company with national, and international ambitions, but all of a sudden things weren't working out. For all the dedication and hard work, my life was in turmoil and it felt as if everything was crumbling around me. I was failing. Something had to give. At the end of a short rope that looked eerily like a noose, I sought help and found it in the form of a coach. I walked him through my situation and talked through the challenges I faced, both personal and professional. We revi revisited my goals and the trajectory I wanted for my life, and with a full grasp of the issues, he set out in search of answers. His, re his research was thorough. When we got back together, he had my organizational chart, essentially a bird's eye view of the entire company, up on a wall. Our dis discussion started with a simple question. Do you know what you need to do to turn things around? I hadn't a clue. He said there was only one thing I needed to do. He had identified 14 positions that needed few fa new faces, and he believed that with the right individuals in those key spots, the company, my job, and my life would see a radical change for the better. I was shocked and let him know. I thought it would take a lot more than that. He said, no, Jesus needed 12 but you'll need 14. It was a transformational moment. I had never considered how so few could change so much. What became obvious is that as focused as I thought I was, I wasn't focused enough. Finding 14 people was clearly the most important thing I could do. So based on this meeting, I made a huge decision. I fired myself. I stepped down as CEO and made finding those 14 people my singular focus. This time, the earth really did move. Within three years, we began a period of sustained growth that averaged 40% year over year for almost a decade. 
We grew from a regional player to an international contender. Extraordinary success showed up and we never looked back. As success begat success, something else happened along the way. The language of the one thing emerged. Having found the 14, I began working with our top people individually to build their careers and businesses. Out of habit, I would end our coaching calls with a recap of the handful of things they were agreeing to accomplish before our next session. Unfortunately, many would get most of them done, but not necessarily what mattered most. Results suffered, frustration followed. So in the effort to help them succeed, I started shortening my list. If you can just do three things this week, if you can just do two things this week, finally, out of desperation, I went as small as I could possibly go and asked, what's one thing you can do this week such that by doing it, everything else would be easier or unnecessary? And the most awesome thing happened. Results went through the roof. After these experiences, I looked back at my successes and failures and discovered an interesting pattern. Where I'd had huge success, I had narrowed my concentration to one thing. And where my success varied, my focus had too. And the light came on. Going small. If everyone has the same number of hours in a day, why do some people seem to get so much more done than others? How do they do more, achieve more, earn more, and have more? If time is the currency of achievement, then why are some able to cash in their allotment for more chips than others? The answer is they make getting in the heart of things the heart of their approach. They go small. When you want the absolute best chance to succeed at anything you want, your approach should always be the same. Go small. Going small is ignoring all the things you could do and doing what you should do. It's recognizing that not all things matter equally and finding the things that matter most. It's a tighter way to connect what you do with what you want. It's realizing that extraordinary results are directly determined by how narrow you make your focus. The way to get the most out of your work and your life is to go as small as possible. Most people think just the opposite. They think big success is time consuming and complicated. As a result, their calendars and to-do lists become overloaded and overwhelming. Success starts to feel out of reach, so they settle for less. Unaware that big success comes when we do a few things well, they get lost trying to do too much and in the end accomplish too little. Over time, they lower their expectations, abandon their dreams, and allow their life to get small. This is the wrong thing to make small, your life. You have only so much time and energy, so when you spread yourself out, you end up spread thin. You want your achievements to add up, but that actually takes subtraction, not addition. You need to do fewer things for more effect instead of doing more things with side effects. The problem with trying to do too much is that even if it works, adding more to your work and your life without cutting anything brings a lot of bad with it. Missed deadlines, disappointing results, high stress, long hours, lost sleep, poor diet, no exercise, and missed moments with family and friends. All in, the same, all in the name of going after something that is easier to get than you might imagine. Going small is a simple approach to extraordinary results and it works. It works all the time, anywhere and on anything. Why? Because it only has one purpose, to ultimately get you to the point. When you go as small as possible, you'll be sharing at, that, at one thing and that's the point. You'll be staring at one thing, and that's the point. Excuse me. So that's chapter one. I'm now going to review the back of the book, which is an implementation piece for this uh, thing. And it's uh, on page 218. It's after the rest of the book. It says, putting the one thing to work. In delay, there lies no plenty. William Shakespeare. So what now? You've read the book. You get it. 
you're ready to experience extraordinary results in your life. So what do you do? How do you tap into the one thing in the most powerful way? Let's revisit the heart of the book and look at ways you can put the one thing to work right now. For brevity's sake, I'll shorten the focusing question to be sure to add, quote, such that by doing it, everything will be easier or unnecessary at the end of each question. Your personal life. Let one thing bring clarity to the key areas of your life. Here's a short sampling. What's the one thing I can do this week to discover or affirm my life's purpose? What's the one thing I can do in 90 days to get in the physical shape I want? What's the one thing I can do today to strengthen my spiritual faith? What's the one thing I can do to find time to practice the guitar 20 minutes a day? Knock five strokes off my golf game in 90 days. Learn to paint in six months such that by doing it, everything will be easier or unnecessary. Your family. Use the one thing with your family for fun and rewarding experience. Here are some options. What's the one thing we can do this week to improve our marriage? What's the one thing we can do every week to spend more quality family time together? What's the one thing we can do tonight to support our kids' schoolwork? What's the one thing we can do to make our next vacation the best ever? Our next Christmas the best ever? The next Thanksgiving the best ever? Please know that these are simply examples. If they apply to you personally, then great. If not, use them to prompt you to discover what areas you might explore that matter to you. And don't forget time blocking. Time block with yourself and make sure the things that matter get done and the activities that matter get mastered. In some cases, you'll want to block time to find your answer and other times you'll just need to block time to implement it. Now let's go to work and see how you might take the power of the one thing with you. Your job. The one thing to work, the one thing, put the one thing to work taking your professional life to the next level. Here's a few ways to get started. What's the one thing I can do today to complete my current project ahead of schedule? What's the one thing I can do this month to produce better work? What's the one thing I can do before my next review to get the raise that I want? What's the one thing I can do before my next review to get the raise that I want? I already read that one. What's the one thing I can do every day to finish my work and still get home on time? Your work team. Pull the one thing into your work with others. Whether you're a manager, executive, or even a business owner, bring one thing thinking into your everyday work situations to drive productivity upward. Here are some scenarios to consider. In any meeting, ask, what's the one thing we can accomplish in this meeting and end early? In building your team, ask, what's the one thing I can do in the next six months to find and develop incredible talent? That's a shocker. Uh, in some, excuse me, in planning for the next month, year, or five years, ask, what's the one thing we can do right now to accomplish our goals ahead of schedule and under budget. In your department or at the highest company level, ask, what's the one thing we can do in the next 90 days to create a one thing culture? Again, these are merely examples to get you thinking about the possibilities. And just as in your personal life, once you've decided what matters most, professional time blocking becomes your way of making sure it gets done. At work, this is usually about either a short term project you must complete or an ongoing long-term activity you're committed to doing repeatedly. No matter, an appointment with yourself is the surest path to ensuring you achieve extraordinary results. Casual open discussions or short in-house workshops around key concepts in this book might really help everyone at work find their understanding and get on the same page. If implementing the one thing in an area requires you to involve others, consider getting them their own copy of the book. Sharing your ahas is a great start, and you may be happily surprised with the insights you get back when others have a chance to read the book on their own. Keep in mind that it takes more than reading the book and a few conversations or mentions in a meeting to make the one thing a new habit of life or in the lives of those around you. 
You know from reading the book that it takes an average of 66 days to create a habit. So approach this accordingly. To ignite your life, you must focus on one thing long enough for it to catch fire. Let's look at a few areas where the one thing might make a difference in your nonprofit. What's the one thing we can do to fund our annual financial needs? Serve twice as many people. Double our number of volunteers in your school. What's the one thing we can do to decrease our dropout rate to zero? Raise our test scores by 20%. Increase our graduation rate to 100%. Double our parent participation in your place of worship. What's the one thing you can do to improve our worship experience? Double our mission outreach success. Max out our attendance. Achieve our financial goals in your community. What's the one thing we can do to improve our sense of community? Help the homebound. Double our volunteerism. Double voter turnout. After my wife, Mary, read this book, I asked her to do something. She turned to me, and you know what she said? Gary, that's not my one thing right now. <laughs> we laughed, high-fived, and I got to do it. I got to do it myself. The one thing forces you to think big, work things through to create a list, prioritize that list so that a geometric progression can happen, and then hammer away on the first thing, the one thing that starts your domino run. So be prepared to live a new life and remember that the secret to extraordinary results is to ask a very big and specific question that leads you to one very small and tightly focused answer. If you try to do everything, you will wind up with nothing. If you try to do just one thing, the right one thing, you could wind up with everything you ever wanted. The one thing is real. If you put it to work, it will work. So don't delay. Ask yourself the question, what's the one thing I can do right now to start using the one thing, that's meta, <laughs> the one thing in my life, such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary. And make, the, and make doing the answer your first one thing. Make doing the answer your one. Okay, onward, Gary Keller. Well, thanks, Gary. I really appreciate that. And my commentary is going to be, um, I'm going to read one chapter a day uh, for the next 17 days, and I'm going to share it with my friends here on, on YouTube. And you're welcome to follow along. I'll leave a link down for uh, Amazon to get connected to this. I got mine out of the library. Uh, I wanted it sooner than they could deliver, uh, and it's free. Hey, how about that? Sorry, Gary. But I am promoting it, and I am espousing it, and I believe that it does make a difference. Uh, and so the one thing I'm going to do today is uh, record this video and post it on YouTube. Thanks, guys. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you on Chapter 2.